Welcome again to worship with St. Paul's Exonia. We welcome all who are watching us wherever you are. We are pleased to have you here. Welcome as we finish our last midweek Lenten services, Passion Week 6. Today, as we follow our Lord, as he gets ever closer to his cross, his death, and our life, we will find the answer to that question that Pilate asked Jesus, what is truth? May the Lord bless our worship today as he has always blessed our worship every day, every time we get together and gather around his word. Amen. We will use the order service as you see on your screen. We begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. Surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Your light will rise in the darkness and your night will become like the noonday. The Lord will guide you always. Your sun will never set again, and your moon will wane no more. The Lord will be your everlasting light, and your days of sorrow will end. On no day will the gates of the holy city ever be shut, for there will be no night there. We continue with the reading of our Passion History. Today we will have Passion Reading number six. I will read it off you. It will also be projected for you so you may follow along. We begin. It was the third hour when they crucified him, along with two criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, Forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. The soldiers took his clothes, dividing them into four shares, one for each of them, with the undergarment remaining. This garment was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. They said to one another, Let's not tear it. Let's decide by lot who will get it. This happened that the scripture might be fulfilled, which said, they divided my garments among themselves and cast lots for my clothing. So this is what the soldiers did. And sitting down, they kept watch over him there. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, You who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. Come down from the cross if you are the Son of God. In the same way, the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders mocked him. He saved others, but he can't save himself. He's the king of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the son of God. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. He said, Don't you fear God since you are under the same sentence? You are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Jesus. Remember me when you come into your kingdom. I tell you the truth. Today, you will be with me in paradise. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Dear woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, his disciple took her into his house. At the sixth hour, 
Darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour, for the sun stopped shining. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing near heard this, they said, Listen, he's calling Elijah. Later, knowing that all was now completed, and so that the scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant, and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks split. The tombs broke open and the bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. They came out of the tombs and after Jesus' resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many people. When the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that had happened, they were terrified and exclaimed, Surely he was the Son of God. This ends our passion history. Grace and peace to you, dear fellow followers of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As our Lord gets ever closer to his cross, his death, and our life. The words for our focus today is just one verse, John chapter 18, verse 38. We hear, What is truth? retorted Pilate. With this, he went out again to the Jews gathered there and said, I find no basis for a charge against him. This is the word of our Lord. It is Good Friday morning, early morning. Jesus had been up for most of Thursday night. The Jewish leaders had rushed a death sentence against Jesus early that morning. And now Jesus stands before Pilate, the governor of this region. No matter what the Jewish leaders had said before, no matter what sentence they had given Jesus, they couldn't do anything unless Pilate let them. They could not murder Jesus unless Pilate, the Roman governor, allowed it. So they take Jesus to Pilate early Friday morning. Jesus stands before the man who holds his life in his hands and Pilate asked Jesus question after question. And Jesus doesn't answer. Not until Pilate asks, are you a king? Jesus says these words right before the focus of our sermon. Jesus says in John 18, verse 37, you say, that I am a king. In fact, the reason I was born and came into the world is to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. That is when Pilate then says what he says in our sermon text. What is truth? You kind of wish you kind of wish you knew how Pilate said those words. I've always considered that maybe Pilate had a sarcastic tone when he said those words. What is truth? Or maybe, what is truth? That is the question 
I want to focus on today. What is true? It is a question that is still important for our world today. Because is there such a thing as truth? What I mean is this. Have you ever heard someone say or yourself say or think, well, that's good for them, but I don't think so. Or you can believe what you want to believe. You can think what you want to think, and I'll think what I want to think. Or when it comes to religion, there are many ways to heaven. There are many ways to God. All those questions are another way of asking, what is truth? Is there such a thing as truth? You and I know there, there obviously is. It is the one who stands in front of Pilate today. When Pilate asks, what is truth? It is Jesus. Jesus once said these words. He said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Our Savior is the truth. What he did for you and for me is the truth. He is truly the only way, the only truth, the only life. Think ahead to next week when we begin Holy Week. Think again to all the things that our Lord will go through. After having been up most of the night on Thursday, after being arrested, beaten, put on trial, beaten some more, flogged, after having to carry his own means of death, he gets nails pierced through his flesh. He gets metal that rips apart his hands and his feet. He does that for the truth, for you and for me. He does that because he is the true God, because he is our true Savior. So the answer to Pilate's question, what is truth? It is right there in front of him. It is right there in front of us. It is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. For a hymn today, I want to include a hymn, Right On, Right On in Majesty, sung by the King's College Choir of Cambridge over in England. Please enjoy.
thank you for taking the time to watch our worship service. My prayer, our prayer, is that you were edified by God's word and that your faith was strengthened. Again, my name is Pastor Suk Petsinghan. Thank you for watching us here from St. Paul's in Exonia, Wisconsin. If you enjoy our worship service, please make sure to like us on Facebook and to subscribe to our YouTube channel. May the Lord bless you this day and all your days. Amen.